Something there? <laughs> must be nothing. The Crisis series, or as I like to call it, the Brotherhood of the Traveling Pajamas, and their developer Crytek are very, very well known for their technical skills. Even when they moved the series over from PC to console, they really showed that they have these amazing visual chops. Now, whether or not those skills match with their game design acumen, that's more a matter of debate. I found the original Crisis to be great to look at, but very cold and very hollow. I preferred Crisis 2 because they did streamline the controls and they were able to sort of design the game in a more directed way. I know that sentiment is not shared by everybody. So with Crisis 3, Crytek is trying to appeal to everyone <laughs> with bows. Stealthy, nasty, one shot and you're dead bows. I kind of like them. Not enough to see the Hunger Games, but I get it now. Of course, the game is more than just a Robin Hood at the edge of the apocalypse. Taking place 20 years after the events of the first and second game in a world governed by the Cell Corporation, who now harness limitless energy from the tech of the Seth aliens, defeated at the end of Crisis 2. You return as Prophet, freed by his former squadmate Psycho, to fight the Cell Corporation in their rebel army. Of course, things go a little awry and the aliens are back and you're once again saving the world from the brink of destruction. The story is kind of ridiculous and some of the dialogue is cringeworthy. One big sweaty armpit. But the exceptional production values carry the silliness with the slick effectiveness of a Bruckheimer picture and it's easy to get lost in the spectacle. Just try not to pay too close attention. No, piss off. The real star of the show is the art direction, depicting a devastated Manhattan which has undergone a reclamation by natural life and affords not only some awe-inspiring backdrops, but some very clever level design that plays very well with the nanosuit superhero abilities. Tall grass obscures enemies, canyons created by nuclear blasts cleverly turn the remnants of man-made structures into something feeling paleolithic. Much better than Crisis 2, the design feels better integrated into the game and kept me far more engaged and intrigued, assuming the sun is out. While technical aspects of the lighting are undeniably impressive, when the game is dark, it's really dark, with light sources further obscuring everything around them. In theory, it adds tension, but at some point, you just want to know who is shooting at you and how to exit a level to reach the next one. The gameplay and controls are largely unchanged from Crisis 2, and if anything, they're more refined. Your HUD helps identify threats and opportunities, and a new hacking minigame lets you turn turrets to your advantage. It's the ease and speed with which you can exploit all your power fantasy tools that keeps the pace of the game snappy, which coupled with the improved level design, rewards experimentation and mixing it up between stealth and Rambo playstyles. But what about that bow? In a thoughtful addition to give more breadth to stealth play, the bow doesn't reveal Prophet's location and drops most enemies in one hit. It may sound overpowered, but the ammo is limited and it's remarkably satisfying and manages to be a get out of jail free card when nothing else is working or when you just need to feel better than the AI. You like it now? I'm coming around. With all this in place, the game really hums until it completely runs out of ideas. The final third of the single player campaign is just abandons all of the clever level design. At times, you're just driving through an open area that's oddly and strangely depopulated. Suddenly you're doing things in threes as you do in so many other games out there. You know, if you've played any sci-fi shooter, you're gonna know what happens at the end of this game. It really is a shame because Crisis 3 starts off so strong and so promising. No oh, shit, 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 what are they thinking? Multiplayer is also mixed, but does have some high points. In large part, thanks to the level design that takes from the best of the single player game with myriad places to hide and jump to. The modes that work best are those that keep players in constant motion around the level. Team Deathmatch, Spears, a King of the Hill style mode, and especially Extraction, which has one team trying to collect enough objects and get them to an evac site. It not only requires teamwork, but keeps the teams in a covering and active position and really shined in all the levels I played. 
less successful is the crash site mode, which has two teams fighting over the same randomly chosen points. On levels of these sizes, forcing all the players into one area undermines its design highlight and typically turns into a manic free-for-all. Another unique mode is Hunter, which gives two players unlimited stealth and just a bow as they track down and kill the cell operatives of the other team, who then become hunters themselves after death. It's quite fun, but the rounds are very short, and as much as I wanted it to, it never evolved into something more sophisticated than its basic premise. Similar to Assassin's Creed's multiplayer mode, it's hard to see the shelf life. Crisis 3 comes so close in its single player campaign to finally equal the game design with its technical prowess, but can't maintain the imagination to see this short game through to its conclusion. Throw in some strong, if not remarkable, multiplayer, and you have another case of the what it could have been. Hey, at least there's that bow. A 3 out of 5. I know a lot of you guys pointed out that I seem to be less enthused about the games I've been reviewing since I got here. It's just, I've been randomly choosing the games that I'm going to be reviewing and all that stuff. But there are good reviews. Check it out right here. YouTube.com slash Rev3Games and hit that subscribe button because then you'll never miss the chance when I finally say a five out of five.